How are you today? Pretty good. Good. Okay, thanks for coming. We'll get started with uh, some injury updates. Um, Luke, Luke Gifford is uh, right now doesn't look like he's going to be able to play. He hasn't uh, improved enough to to say anything more than that right now. Uh, <clears throat> Ty Ferguson is getting better. We'll have to see where he progresses, uh, how much he can practice this week. Eric Lee uh, is going through that protocol with the concussion, and uh, we're hopeful uh, that that goes well and smoothly, and then we'll see about his status. I'll be able to update you on Thursday about that. Antonio Reed uh, actually dressed um, and should be further ahead, obviously, physically to practice this week. Uh, same thing with Aaron Williams. He did not play. He dressed. We hope that he just gets better and better throughout the week. Uh, Chris Weber had a stinger. Uh, you know, and so as that settles down, we'll, we'll know more, but we're hopeful that he will be able to play. Ben Steely had a groin. We're hopeful that he'll get better and be able to play. Zach Darlington, you've noticed, is, has still not played. Um, and we'll see how he progresses during the week. He's been sick. And Jalen Bradley, hopefully he'll practice soon. We'll see what he can do today. And I'll be able to update you for sure on his status, uh, how he's practiced this week, and how ready he could possibly be for the game. Guys that played well in the game, Mick Stoltenberg had another good game, Dedrick Young, Marcus Newby, Alex Davis is growing as a player, Colin Miller is getting more turns and doing a nice job uh, uh, for a new player in there, we're pleased with that, Jordan Ober, all the, all the specialists were good, Ober and uh, Caleb Lightborn, you know, had maybe one of his more consistent days of his career, uh, Drew is continuing to be very good. And Isaac Armstrong has filled in for Zach in a good way. Offensively, Jack Stoll showed up. I'm excited about Jack. You know, he, he's been through a lot injury-wise since he's been here. And uh, I think he's got a lot of upside in the future. And, of course, uh, the receivers, J.D. and Stan and D.P., they, they had their moments, too, in the ball game. So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those games in an overtime game as you review it. Um, it's hard, you know, it's a very disappointing loss and there are so many either lost or missed opportunities. Um, you know, the, 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 the red zone efficiency of our team has to, has to get better. We're going to obviously focus on that. Uh, touchdowns in the red zone, keeping the ball in the red zone, um, all that is a, a big, big factor. And when you uh, when you turn the ball over in the red zone, it's uh, you know it, it really, really is, it hurts you. And then uh, you know just in general, our turnover margin. You know if if we can focus on anything as we go forward here, it's taking care of the ball and getting it. You know we got some timely turnovers the other day, big ones in the game that that could have, should have, would have won us the game. Uh, and. Uh, and so we, we just can't return the favor like we did. Uh, you know, just in general, our, our offensive production, you know, we, we we're continuing to work on it. We actually had some runs in the game against a good run defense in Northwestern that, was, that were pretty encouraging, although not near as, uh, you know, as much total production as we would like. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we've still got to go that direction. And... Uh, you know, defensively, uh, we, we played a lot of good defense. We probably uh, at times gave up runs because of just not quite finishing the, the gap responsibility, getting beaten to the play a little bit. But we also, you know, we gave up two touchdowns on, on, on plays that were broken, not necessarily broken, but, re, re, you know, redirected his whole field and came back on us and we just weren't in great shape to make a play or missed a tackle coming back. Uh, 
so you know that's kind of all those things that I just look back on and reflect in a game like that that we we lost or missed opportunities that could have should have would have made a difference in the ball game and uh you know, I think you know. From there, we'll we'll take it today with our team and and uh, start to get ready for another game. Um, Minnesota has a has a good uh, running attack. Uh, they they have good backs. Uh, we're going to have to do a good job there. Uh, and in overall defense, they've been ranked nationally uh, and and playing well. You know, they. Uh, they have a couple guys that are good, really good pass rushers uh, off the edge. So we got to be a, a accountable for those guys when we do throw the ball. And then what we have to be able to do, have to be able to do, I think, in this game is have a balanced attack. I think when you look at their defense and and how they play pass defense, which is ranked very high in the conference, uh, you know, you're going to have to be able to balance out some runs. And uh, and and then do what we can do in the play action game, and do it best on first and second down. Their third down uh, defensive front gets after you pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I know I'll get questions about the state of our team, and my expectations are is that uh, we'll have a great week of practice. I, I think that uh, you know this is a a great time uh, for all of us to not be controlled by our circumstances but be controlled by the moment of what we get to do. I'm excited to get back to work with our team this afternoon and get ready to go and I expect uh, with this group as we've had a great enthusiasm for the work as we get going. You know I think that uh, we have good responsible older guys in the leadership that will show the way in that way and then I think that uh, you know our younger players are are, are tuned in and have been excited to play and, and uh, can see some growth that they're making themselves individually. And from there, I'll open it up to questions. I'd like to talk about the state of, of the team. Uh, do you at all address with them just the, the buzz and the talk on the street, basically, or through social media to try to keep them, I guess, in tune with what you guys want to do as opposed to worrying about what's being said outside? You know, I, I think that in, in, in general, I don't, I don't, I don't try to kind of mediate between what what may be going on uh, outside of our room. I, I just kind of focus on what we need to do in our room, um, and you know, it, it, and you know, this you know, a message for for these guys just in general for their life is that you know. Um, the, the great thing that you can do in a hard situation is not be controlled by that situation, but really form your identity for a guy that's going to continue to work hard and make it better, you know, be the difference maker in all this. And, and uh, you know, so, and we actually preach that from the very beginning, that, that that's the way life is. And when, the, and, and usually in seasons, there's some kind of rough spots. So you've got to be able to not let those dictate who you are, but let, you know, you have, you probably have to fight it a little bit, but that's all right too. But you have, you have to learn uh, to be that kind of person that will be reliable to your teammate. And, you know, that's what being on a team is all about. You have to be that reliable one on your team. And so, you know, the, the focus goes back to the room for the coaches and the players. And um, we all just basically have to do our job and try to do it better than, than we've done it. Mike, your, your defense over the last four games, and this doesn't take into account some of the pretty good offenses, mm -hmm. has given up 35.5 points, 484 yards. Six and a half yards per play. Where has your defense regressed over the last month, and how concerned are you about that? What can you do to fix it? Well, I, I think that you know the 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 one thing I think that this defensive staff, uh, with the moving parts that we've had, Sam, you know, we've had. We've, we've, I think they've done a nice job of, of having to adjust to sometimes not having the first three safeties that are playing. You know, from the, from the very beginning, we didn't have a, a veteran corner that was out there. So we're playing basically with two and a half rookies. Lamar played a little bit a year ago. So there, there's a lot of moving parts that uh, 
we've had to deal with. You know, Luke Gifford was one of our most solid performers for a long time, and we haven't had Luke for a while. And I'm, I'm not, these are just these are just parts that are moving that have to be adjusted to all the time. And uh, you know, I think that you know that that. I know for a fact that this group does a great job of teaching preparation and doing what we can with the team to prepare to win. So, you know, you know the 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 statistical part of it is is one thing what's going on with our team and the coaching part and the work we're getting from the players is is what I see all the time and I think they're they're doing a nice job of growing these guys as a unit and individually I, I think that uh, they're doing they're doing everything they can putting those pieces together and getting them ready to go after the game um, Iaco, Bob Iaco, as a coordinator said the following there's no reasonable reason considering where the defensive program was at to believe that they should be able to do everything that needs to be done in the game to win the game. What is he talking about? You know, I think that probably he, he could explain a little bit more about that, about what he meant specifically. But, you know, we have obviously made tried to make a difference in in what we're doing defensively, Sam. You know, I mean, we, we made a structural change. Uh, the adaptation of players into the system has been a, you know, has been a big job for our staff. And we did it for, you know, I had, I had made mention to you and to all of you that we did it in a, in a, uh, with our goal of being better. And we are, we are growing to that, not necessarily past it yet. Uh, so that's a pretty obvious look at, at where we are, I think. Uh, and like I said, you know, as we've made this change, staff, system, all that, uh, I, I can appreciate the, all the work that's gone into making those parts work. Do you perceive that players would read something like that and hear that his expectation level for them isn't very high because there's no reasonable reason to expect them to be any better than they are? You know, I would, I don't, that has never been any kind of a message of, of that has ever surrounded any of our meetings or what we do as a team. I've never, uh, you know, program-wise, that's never been thought of. We don't even look back most of the time like that. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the, the proof for our players is kind of in what happens with them day to day and the teaching that's going on. And I think that they have grasped on or latched onto it in a very, very positive way, actually. You know, uh, you know what, what happens with us productivity-wise uh, may not reflect all the time the growth that we're getting from individuals within that picture. You know, like when I mention guys that have played well, you know, you, I think that you're seeing a guy like Mick Stoltenberg in this new nose tackle deal growing as the season goes on, you know. And Dedrick and Chris Weber have been just like that in the interior. So there are, there are parts of it. There are other parts of it that aren't moving as fast as we probably need to or want to. Uh, we could look at it now and say that's sort of natural with the change, but uh, we... You know, our job now is to just make it continue to grow. I mentioned Alex Davis because he is he is becoming a better football player as we as we speak. Uh, so, I, like I said, I see parts of it and individuals that are growing, and I think that this group has had an attitude of work and growth the whole time. Coach, when it came down to the uh, last half of the fourth quarter and overtime, what were your thoughts on some of the uh, play selection? Oh, you know, we would all we would all like to have plays back when you don't win, and so you can you can you can as we will analyze all of that once again. Like I, I, you know, I think that uh, that the, the 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 first down call had a had a great shot for a touchdown pass, believe it or not, um, and. And, and we would have all liked that call. We had a good protection called. Uh, you know, the, 
you know, I think the one that uh, everybody thinks about and that really hurt us was the sack off the screen. And, and that one, it, it, that's, that brings a valid question up, but at the same time, you know, that, that formation, that play at that time is, is, is all about the execution of it. And they had a defensive lineman fall down and get up and end up right in the middle of the screen, and Tanner had to hold the ball. So, you know, that's, uh, that's still bad, but that's how, that's how that stuff happens. And then, you know, the fourth down play was actually a good call. And, and J.D. made too much of an adjustment on his route. And I don't know if you have seen the replay, but J.D. actually is supposed to be over the ball, take his man over the ball, and then retrace. Well, he did it all too fast. He brought his man right into the play. His man knocked the ball down. The guy covering J.D. knocked the ball down, and DeMornay is wide open and is going to catch that ball for a first down. So, you know, that that's a reflection on me and our coaching and getting JD in the right place, but it's not necessarily a reflection on that call. Have you had a chance to uh, talk with Phil Moose more in depth about your vision for the program? And is there, is there something in particular that you would express about it? You know, what I'll tell you is that I have talked to uh, Bill uh, somewhat in depth, not a lot, a couple different times. And, you know, the topics will be be between us um, at this point. But uh, I've had good talks with him and, and, and been, been around him quite a bit since he's been here. When you came, when you, when you came here uh, in 2015, Obviously, the rest had run a completely different offense yeah. prior to your arrival. Yes. So you had made a concerted effort in the first two years with Tommy as a quarterback to blend. Yes. And what the original, the previous offense, index offense had done, but also what you did. Yeah. When Diaco came in, what what was his approach? It appears that there was no such blending, that it was, it was a hard shift. And do you think that that hard shift has contributed to some of the, to some of the, um, the struggles on the you know, as I look at it, I think that, uh, you know, that, that we hired a guy with a system that he coached at a high level. And, and so we were looking to make that change structurally. Uh, like I have mentioned to you, I have been intrigued by going back to that for me personally. Uh, and, you know, I think that the, the, the blending of the structure you know, it, 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 it may not look like it in total, Sam, but when you're playing quarter, quarters coverage, whether you're in a 3-4 or a 4-3, there, there is definitely a blending of, you know, there, there is some common ground with every quarters coverage, how people do it. You know, and, uh, you know, I've been uh, a part of and watched it, the teaching of this quarter system when we play it, go forward, there are similarities and there are differences. Uh, and so, you know, I, I think when you look at parts of it, you know, when you, when you, when you look at gaps or, or you look at what the intent of a coverage is, uh, there are there is common ground. So in a way, there's always a blend when you're when you're talking about defense. It's easier to talk about that offensively just because of the the skill, um, you know, the certain s skill set that the quarterback has. That's the word I was looking for. The skill set that he has, and you know, when when as Tommy was finishing, we had the opportunity to get a guy with experience that could come in here like Tanner, and that that part of it lent itself to probably something that we'd done more in the past. So, um, you know, those those are that's a little bit different when you're talking about blending. Yeah. Did you communicate with? Coach Diaco, just the, you wanted this to, to transpire quickly, smoothly, and quickly. Was well, part of the all of us, all of us, Steve, expect the best, you know, and uh, you know, I, I don't. 
I don't ever remember and saying, Bob, let's do this really fast. You know, let's get this, you know, but, but we all want that. We all want that from the first game through every game. And, and then when you see where you are, everybody just works hard at trying to make it better. And that's where we are in every phase of our game. And I've been proud of our coaches and in, 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 in the fact that I think they have kept the players engaged in growing. And I'm proud that we have some guys, players that are tough-minded enough to keep going and understanding this. And, and I, I think part of the reason is that the players are engaged as the coaches are st still teaching. And I, and I think players see that. That's just a personal feeling I have, or, or more than that probably is what I see. And, uh, and so our coaches will continue to do that. And I think it, if the coaches continue to do that and try to give them a better answer, then they'll latch on and grow. We'll get better. Yeah, a lot of, let's say, <clears throat> Colin Miller, Jalen Bradley have more and more young guys sort of taking reps in the season. How would you, no, it's case by case, but sort of break down where that falls along injury need compared to yeah, that's good. see what some young guys <laughs> You know, we've we've ended up with a lot of relatively new guys playing more is exactly right. I think that that, uh, you know, like I said a week ago at Purdue, we looked out there and there were five freshmen playing on offense. Uh, and part of that was started uh, due to injury. Like when Hymas took over, we had two injuries in a row at right tackle. And so Brendan got in there. And at at this point, Brendan has won the job. You know, and and uh, you know, and of course, Matt's playing right guard because of Tanner Farmer's injury, and and we Cole had to go in there and play for Mike Decker. So there was some dominoes by injury, but you know, there's also been a reinforcement of those moves by those guys are are doing a pretty good job. You know, we're obviously not perfect. We're, we're you know, if we, if we were, we'd have more production and and and. Uh, be looking a little differently, I think. But, uh, you know, then you take a freshman. He's a redshirt freshman. But, uh, you know, J.D. Spillman definitely is not because of an injury. He is, he's won that job and plan. Tyjon Lindsay earned his alternating role with De Mornay because of what he's done. And Jalen Bradley was in there because we wanted him to play, not because of any injury necessarily. The Trey Bryant thing kind of escalated that a little bit. But... He'd, he'd be up in there anyway, getting some turns. So we're excited about that. So, you know, I think that as you, as you look at it, uh, some other guys like Colin Miller have gotten an opportunity. But we've seen all along that this guy is going to be good and he needs to play a little bit. So, you know, there's been, there's been some stuff like that that I think has, uh, you know, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a blend of, Yes, that some opportunity was presented through injury. Some of it was earned by how they're doing. Mike, you guys had uh, eight official visitors in this weekend. What, what's your message to them and their families when you talk to them? Because obviously they're going to have some of the same questions that are, that are out there right now. Yeah, you know, I think, you know, the, the one thing that we're doing as a staff is we are going f forward with the things that we're supposed to do. Coach our team and recruit the next one. And uh, and so that's what we're focusing on. We we have put uh, you know a ton of time into this 18 class, and like you mentioned, we had a number of uh, uh, really good visitors this last weekend, and and we've had a um, a lot of success with that 18 group as we've gone forward. And we're going to continue to recruit those guys, and then hopefully get them signed in December. Uh, so we're, you know, we're we're doing exactly what our job description describes. We coach our team and recruit our next one, and that's what we do all the time. Coach, I know that we've asked you this in the past, but uh, with three games left, you envision your personal role uh, with this football team changing at all? My personal role? In terms of what you do on game day, play calling, anything during the week you anticipate changing? If you're on Oh, you know what? I, I enjoy my involvement in what I can do, you know, to kind of give direction to all side, all, all the parts of the of the program, I think. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I've kind of maintained a consistency in doing that uh, going forward. I don't envision any 
anything else right now at this moment changing in that way except you know we all want to do better and so we're all searching for those ways as we get ready for the game studying the opponent uh, and preparing our team and messaging our team whatever we can do best better uh, we'll continue to look at that but as far as me personally um, if I can do those roles that I've had better then that will hopefully help my part of it like uh, Damian Jackson was up here talking to us earlier, it's Veterans Day this week. What, what has he meant to this team uh, walking on a former Navy SEAL? Yeah, I can, I can remember a few years back meeting Damian Jackson when he came and, and, uh, and him stating that one day he wanted to go to college and be a football player. And, and, uh, and then lo and behold, he shows up on our doorstep as a freshman. <laughs> It, what is he 27 years old and uh, what a special person he, he is uh, you know from the moment he started working out with our team Ross he was uh, he set a high standard I'll say that you know the, the you know the watching him work out is impressive uh, watching him day to day do what he does is impressive uh, the discipline that he has um, in in all the parts of uh, being a teammate um, is impressive. I think it's been uh, good for our team to have him here. I'm hopeful that as he goes forward that he can find a niche with our team where he can actually contribute on the field. And one thing I know, he'll never stop working to find that niche. Mike, how would you say you guys have done just in terms of penalties this year? better but not you know we you know we're at the point where we, we can probably uh you know really focus in on some of the things that have happened it's it's they're pretty well defined you know in our control how we could we can even make it better than it is but i think in general we've done better anything else for coach Mike, is just bowl eligibility that bowl eligibility you know, I think it's one of the carrots, Eric. I think that we, uh, you know, I, th I, I think the, the initial focus is the work that we're going to do this week. Uh, but uh, I think that to, to, not, to not still have that out there as, as something, you know, would, would be kind of denying what's on everybody's mind. <laughs> You know, everybody, I think that, uh, you know, it would be great and we'll state it for our team and for our seniors in particular to fight and get some wins to get, get bowl eligible. And so it, it's definitely a carrot. Mike, how, how familiar are you with P.J. Fleck and just his style and kind of everything that he's brought to Minnesota? <clears throat> You know, I'm I'm not overly familiar with with PJ, except that I can see the t the team, you know, and what he's doing with the team. He's doing a nice job. Uh, I, I think that uh, you know, when you look at that team, they they play hard and and they've been in a, a t they've won games and they've been in a tough a, a ton of really kind of tough close games. Uh, you know, as I look at the ones that they've played, they've been really competitive and uh, they're doing a good job. Mike, just on a, as a kind of overall statement, well, why is being in a bowl game important to a program? Do you, you feel that, just generally speaking? Well, I think that, you know, that's, I think that's a good question, you know, because in general, it's, the, the the bowl game is kind of a, I, I, my experience with the bowl games that we've been through through all the years it 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 feels a little bit like uh, a, a special time for the seniors uh, uh, an added one more game kind of experience that I think is fun I think that. Uh, in general, the fans see it as a positive and something that they can go to, to a new place and, and experience. I think that for the team, uh, it's really good extra practices. You know, I like that part of it, you know, and, and uh, 
we spend uh, some added time with the younger guys in the program that maybe have been on the scout team that we can actually start to incorporate schematically with what we're doing and where they might fit when they re-enter the competition for spring ball. You get a jump start on that. So, you know, there's... I, th I think when you look at it, Steve, there's a number of things that make it. It's fun, you know. The the bowl experience uh, is a memory, you know, and and uh, that is, you know, part of their football life that they'll look back on. They get some gear, you know. That it's all a good, good thing. You might mention JD Spillman earlier. I guess I'm curious. Can you describe how he's able to come on as strongly as he has in this offense this year? Maybe how hard is that to do for a redshirt freshman to come in and do what he's done? You know, I think well, J JD has a really good football IQ. Um, you know, so the understanding of what he's doing, uh, it's it's pretty neat to see. And he is one of those guys that has a, a kind of a football maturity that is is beyond his years a little bit. You know, I, I think that you know when when you think about it, he was mostly a runner and a defensive back in high school. He did have the benefit of red shirting and so running and catching the ball. But, you know, he has been a uh, very good individual route runner versus man-to-man -man coverage, and he has gotten a good feel for how to play against zones. And, uh, and that's not necessarily uh, ordinary. You know, so having an idea about coverage, having an idea about where he's going to get the ball in a certain situation, he's got a good feel for it. So he, in that way, is really a fun young guy to work with because he kind of gets it. Even though he was more of a runner, did you see it, did you see it when you were recruiting him, what he could be? Did you have him pick for what he's doing right now? I, I did. I did have a vision for what he could what he could be for us. You know, I think that when you when you can when you've had a a, a system and and even go take it down further a position of of uh, you know what that guy needs to have to play at that position. You know, I, I didn't see him necessarily as a Big Ten running back, but I thought he would be a slot back for us, and I thought that this is what he would be able to do. And and so how the, how fast that happens, I obviously didn't know that, but that's why we recruited him. You know, he has that ability. And, and we've actually, in this offense, had different different styles of slots. We've had tall, rangy guys, and we've had guys like like JD. Uh, both of them can be successful in the offense. And, and when you have an understanding in that position of, of what to do uh, and how to do it, then uh, you can make plays with his ability. We have, we have talked about it. You know, we talked about our team in that way, Sam, when we were heading into the season very thin at corner. Um, and How about now? No, not right now. You know, you, that, that part of it, that part of it is easier said than done because there, there's a lot of, there's so many moving parts at that position and probably not what you're thinking. It would just cover the guy, you know, if you're playing man to man. But then you, when you're talking about run support, fits, you know, the different co coverages and how to play them. It's too much for right this minute. Thank you all. Appreciate it.